today we'll be discussing on another aspect of karma. So far we have mentioned uh, mainly karma gives two types of results, effects to the present life, good and bad effects, and then uh, the mysterious type of vipaka, giving after some time, maybe in the present life or future lives. And then we discuss about the four functions, four types, how a karma would give its results. By producing a life, by producing vipaka, chitta, chetasikas and kamaja rupas. Sometimes supporting a life, disturbing a life, is obstructing or sometimes even killing. So then uh, we discuss then about uh, with regard to the rebirth, with regard to the rebirth, what is the priority? how a karma gets the opportunity to give its result. And also we discussed about uh, the qualities of uh, uh, states of karma, uh, how it gets the opportunity and before that and how the four stages a karma gets into its ripened, ripened part, ripened stage. Now today we are talking about the karmas in terms of giving, the in terms of their time of giving results. So there is a very uh, famous uh, fundamental introduced by Buddha in few suttas. If I directly go to the uh, yeah, ten point one zero four, ten point one zero four in Maha uh, Mahakama Vibhanga Sutta of Majjhima Nikaya and Nudana Sutta of Anguttara Nikaya and also in some other suttas, Buddha gave a fundamental uh, mentioning that. The, the result of karma occasions in which the karmas are ex, results are experienced. The Pali goes as Tassa Kamma Sa Vipakang Patisang Vedeti. One experiences the results of a karma. Diteva Dhamme in this very life, Upapajava having born in the next life, Apareva Pariyaye in the lives coming after the next life. So he divided the time in Kama is giving results in three into three into three in this very life, also in the next life, and the lives to come after the second life. Moreover, if you go to the next fundamental in the Lona, actually it should be Lona Kapalaka Sutta. Kapala, you can see the footnote uh, 189, the Lona Kapala Sutta. Because in the Sinhalese version, we find the Lona Pala Sutta, but in the Burmese version, we find a different name. Because Sutta can have different names. When some Suttas were uttered, Buddha, Venerable Ananda asked, how do I call this Sutta? So some cases, Buddha gave three names, few names. So in the Sinhalese, uh, Sri Lankan version, we find it as Lona Pala Sutta, which is written in the fundamental 10.105. But if you go to the footnote, I have given the Burmese version. Right, Lona Kapala Sutta. They are the Buddha clearly stated that it is, if I read uh, in the bold letters, if sometimes, if someone attains arahanship, it means uh, if he attains arahanship and uh, uh, how to say, attain Paramibbana, uh, or if he, after he attains arahanship, his past kammas will not get the opportunity to yield their results. Right, yield their results. If he attains arahanship, kammas will not give a rebirth anymore. After he attain the final parinibbana, the final cessation, kama, no kama will get the opportunity to yield their result. It is not compulsory to experience the vipaka results of all the kamas one has done. It is not necessary. So these are the very basic two fundamentals that formulated that became the base for the lecture that we are giving today. So according to that, there are three occasions the kama can give result in the very in the very life that the kama was accumulated in the following life and also lives to come. Then some kammas do not get the opportunity to uh, give the results. So based on that, if I go to the next paragraph, based on these fundamentals within the tradition, kamma has been classified as fourfold according to the opportunity it gets to produce their results. First one is Ditta Dhamma Vedaniya Kamma, the kamma that produces uh, uh, or has results, that if I go into the literary meaning of the uh, Pali meaning, which produces results in this very life, Upapajya Vedaniya Kamma, Kamma that produces results in the preceding life, the following, immediately following life, 
Aparaparya Vedaniya Kamma. Kamma that produces results in lives after the preceding life. It means starting from the life after the following life. I would call it the third life. Starting from the third life. Then, Ahosi Kamma. Kamma that did not find the opportunity to produce its results. So these are the four types of Kammas. Kamma means the kammas which did not get the opportunity to yield their results. So this is the very basic fundamental to two, two suttas from these teachings. So then also we mentioned in one lecture there are four modes the kamma can give their results. Four modes. If you go to the next fundamental. As mentioned above, kamma gives, kammas give their results in four ways. So what are these four ways? We name them as in a previous lecture, Janaka, Kicha, Kicha is function, Upad Kambaka, Upapilaka, and Upagadaka. What does this Janaka mean? Janaka means it produces a new life. Or during the course, it produces certain mind and matter because as a result of the karma. Upatapaka means it supports the life. It makes the life to live long. Sometimes new long means it, it removes the obstacles. It brings certain kinds of pleasures to our life, comfort to our life. Some kammas bring discomfort, but not all comfort and discomfort are caused by karma. We explained this in the first in the beginning of the karma lectures because uh, some karma uh, uh, when we succeed in our lives success get success in our lives due to our effort that is not a result of a karma it means Buddha defined the effects of karma in two portions the effects that you get because of your action you get certain good and bad effects right and then because of a karma you can get a certain special effect that is the mysterious part that the hum uh, beyond the normal human observation. So we are talking about Upapilaka means because of the mysterious uh, functioning of that Kamma, certain uh, misfortunes become befall on our lives. So that is called Upapilaka function. Upagataka function means sometimes because of our misdeeds in the past, our life can get terminated suddenly. Right? So these are the four functions the Kamma uh, gives their results. So now with regard to the, if I read the para paragraph, with regard to the Upatambaka, Upapilaka and Upagataka functions, there are the last three, Upatambaka supporting, Upa supportive, Upapilaka obstructive, Upagataka destructive functions, there is no specific law regarding their time of ripening. There is no specific law. All Javana Chetanas in a certain Viti, now I will come to that later, these Javana Chetanas in a mind process can perform their threefold functions in the same life, the immediately following life, and throughout the entire samsara till one attains the final parnibbana. So, or there is no necessity of defining them as uh, Ditta Dhamma Vedaniya or the present same uh, giving in the same life, Vipaka, giving in the next life, giving the long samsara. We don't need to define them because uh, all the it can be defined, but there is no specific law in defining them. But uh, uh, sometimes they may not get the opportunity to perform any of these three functions. But the next uh, fundamental say with regard to the Janaka Kitcha, this, this function, with regard to the Janaka Kitcha producing Vipaka Chitta Chetasikas and Kamma Jarupa, with regard to the Janaka Kitcha, within the tradition of Theravadis, there is a law concerned with the position of Javana Chetanas in a VT, Kamma was accumulated. In a VT, Kamma was accumulated. So it means now 
we were talking only about this function for the beginning. Later, collectively, we can talk about these three functions because there is no specific law for that. So now, uh, with regard, now, Janaka Kichami, there are, it doesn't mean, I think I'll remind again, there are no four types of kammas. The same kamma can function in four modes. In four modes. So out of these four modes, the Janaka function, Janaka function means producing certain consciousness and matter, rupa, in a one's life. It can be the first consciousness, what is something? It can be a consciousness while we are alive. So, this regarding this function, regarding this function, there is a certain law that we have to understand. Some, what sort of kammas gives results in this very life, in terms of janaka? What sort of kammas give results in the immediately following life, in terms of janaka function? What sort of kammas gives results in parinibbana, starting from the third life, in terms of this function? And what kammas doesn't give the opportunity, so becomes ahosi kamma, right? So that is the law that we are discussing here. Uh, but with regard to the other three functions, there is no specific law because they can uh, uh, the kammas can uh, function the other three other three uh, functions in any life. Right. So with regard to janaka kicca, with regard to the janaka kicca, uh, within the tradition of Theravadins, there is a law concerned with the position of javana chitta chetanas in a viti kamma was accumulated. Right, chetana is the kamma. To gain proper understanding about the four types of kammas, one should first have correct knowledge about the strength of Javana Chittupadas in one Chittavita. Chittupada I mentioned in previous lectures, Chittupada means Chitta plus Chetasika. Chitta doesn't arise alone, together with Chetasika. Chittupada means the cluster, cluster of mentalities which arise together. So they have a strength, there is a, uh, how to say, uh, order of their strength. So if you look into the chart, normally, Javana Chitta arises, Javana is the strong Chittas in a mind process. Chitta arises in certain series. In between we have Chittas called Bhavanga. Bhavanga means our main a Chitta in a certain life. This is also arising and passing away, not one chitta. And then between we have like pockets, we are have mind processes. These are called chitta viti. So if you take a mind door process, we have one mind of our and a chitta. And normally seven powerful chittas by which we perform the actions, mental, physical, verbal actions. So then this keeps on happening. So this is the part, these are the seven chittas by which we perform our function. But it cannot be done with the one viti. There have to be many series of vitis to perform a certain function. So in these seven vitis, these chittas are identical, they are same nature. They are same kind of chittas in one process. So this Manotvaravajana chitta is the adverting consciousness because of which this makes the correct decision for these chittas to become, because of its decision, based on its decision, these chittas become wholesome, more unwholesome. Wholesome, more unwholesome. So, and then these chittas have an extra power. So they are, they are called Javana chittas. With extra power. But this chitta doesn't have that power. This chitta has the intentional attribute. Sabya para, uh, we call it Sausaha. Sausaha and Sabya para. This has the intentional attribute. They, are, they have intentional attribute and also effortful attribute. This chitta also have the effort. But at the same time, they have an extra power. 
So that's why only this chitta becomes the karma, it doesn't become a karma. This is like the door for the karma. Then this, because of this extra power, certain energy will be remain. After chitta has passed away, we call this karma sati. I think in the previous lecture we explained this in very detail. This is the karmic force. Why the karmic force remains? Because of our ignorance. When our ignorance and attachment is not uprooted, it affects our mind unconsciously because of our ignorance, even ignorance is there. So then our, because of the latent ignorance, unconsciously which affects the mind stream, mind, uh, when we do certain acts, those acts are done in a certain manner which has an extra involvement with the object or they have an extra effort than that of a chitta or in whom latent defilements are uprooted. It means when an arahant does a certain action, when he cognizes a certain action, since his delusion about the world, ignorance about the world is uprooted, he does his mind is detached from the objects always and because of his understanding when he does a certain action the involvement of the certain of with the object or action is different from our mind so that that influence made by the latent defilements causes for a certain energy to remain within our mind stream i'm planning to discuss on this matter next week what is this effect of this later defilements to this kama, right? I'll just leave now here saying that this kama sati is uh, left. So with these seven chittas, what happens? This normally when the mind stream starts the urge, when an object strikes at the mind, there is a certain urge within the mind and that normally always the mind has a certain urge unless it is sleepy or in sleep. So, because of that urge, when an object strikes, that urge activates and the mind starts to uh, divert or direct its attention towards the new object. So then, this uh, urge increases and it comes into a level of an uh, impulse at this level. And this impulse keeps on increasing from one chitta to another. Then, when it comes to the how to say, it, it, it uh, comes to the fourth chitta as a law of the nature, law of impermanence, this impulse will fall down gradually and then the chitta process will go back into the Bhavanga stream. So therefore, the impulse of the Javana chittas increases one after another, but it will not keep on increasing. It will come into the declining process because of the law of the nature. So then finally, the mind will go back into the bhavanga state, which is an inactive state. Now, when a certain person has done a kamma, kamma one kamma is done by many sort of these uh, mind processes. All these kamma chittas will leave a certain force in the minds within the mind stream. This force is what will get activated later and produce the vipakas in this mind stream. So now since the level of the strength of Javana Chittas are different, how these forces which are laid by these chittas would get activated is different. So this chitta among these seven chittas within the mind stream the weakest is the number one. Why is that? Because it's get the support. Chitta is always supported by the previous chitta. It is supported by adverting consciousness which doesn't have this extra power. But the second chitta is more powerful than the first chitta because it gets the support of the Javana chitta. Then it, its strength becomes higher. Third chitta gets the support of the second chitta, which is higher than the first chitta, so the strength of the third chitta increases. So likewise, when it comes to fourth chitta, the power it goes to the maximum level within the mind stream. Then what happens as a law of the, law of the phenomenon of impermanence, it will start to decline, but 
it will be more powerful than the third chitta because the third chitta got the support from the second chitta fifth chitta though it's in the falling process it gets the support from the fourth chitta so therefore it is much stronger than the third chitta then sixth chitta is stronger than the second chitta but lesser than the third chitta we assume then the last chitta seventh chitta is weaker but it is powerful than the first chitta so the diagram goes if you go to the next uh, paragraph i have given a diagram so according to that this is just a rough diagram the first chitta has the weakest energy second chitta has much higher third is higher more than fourth is the highest then the fifth chitta which is in the declining process the strength energy it has a higher energy than the third chitta sixth chitta has a higher energy than the second chitta seventh chitta <coughs> is weaker but powerful than the first chitta the time of ripening of kamas in terms of their janaka kicha is based on the strength of javana chittupada in which they arise chittupada means chitta jesika so now the chetana in these seven chittas uh, how they ripen how they get ripen based is based on this lewis chart of the energy right chart of the energy so what happens the weakest chitta if i explain briefly weakest chitta can bring results in this very life only the first chitta since it's very weak it can bring results in the very life the seven chitta which is <coughs> stronger than the first chitta but still weaker can bring according to tradition bring results only in the very next life the middle five chitta second to sixth second chitta to sixth five chittas are much stronger so they can sustain within our mind stream for a longer period and bring results when the opportunity is given so more weaker the chitta is it will be quickly giving the result and the result will also be much lesser not very powerful the powerful results will be given by the middle chittas the seventh chitta can give results only in the immediately following life it cannot give results beyond that i'll come to that explanation at the end of the lecture how the tradition would explain this because normally you would feel if the chitta is powerful it should bring results immediately but that is not the case in the environment if you look sometimes the powerful things brings results later because it can endure for a longer time so i'll come to that point how the tradition explains this uh, uh, phenomenon first we come to ditta dhamma vedaniya ditta dhamma vedaniya means kamas that get ripen in this very life so what 10.1 uh, what is the number 10.1 110 uh, yes 10.110 chetana of first javana chittas can get ripen as vipaka chitta chetasikas only in the present life due to its weakness hence called ditta dhamma vedaniya it cannot bring janaka vipaka after death it cannot bring vipaka after this life moreover they can produce only ahetuka vipaka chitta since they are very weak they don't bring sahetuka vipaka sahetuka vipaka means chitta with roots so they can bring certain chitta weak chitta as their result what sort of weak chitta that can be chakwi i consciousness ear consciousness to happen because of a pleasant object if the kama was strong deep was a strong deep as in the stories of sumana malakara ekasataka brahmana and queen mallika the chetana of first chavana can bring conspicuous results it becomes very obvious to the person if the kama is very strong it can also bring results say within 7 days there are some stories within the buddhist literature the results immediate results were gained because of good and bad kamas because uh, you know the uh, buddha uh, bodhisattva's wife uh, uh, yasodara his father was super buddha and he obstructed the buddha's path because he was angry with the bodhisattva because uh, he left her daughter and went uh, went from the home, uh, house for life to the homeless life so he kept a grudge towards his uh, nephew right uh, so a son in law chodi son in law and when the buddha was going coming to his region he obstructed the buddha's path stay staying in the road and didn't let the buddha to go so buddha prophesied because of this evil deed of obstructing a tathagata with such a evil mind this person would end up in the hell within 7 days so uh, he died after 7 days he died and he was born in the 
have it in the woeful realm. So likewise, if the karma is very strong, very evil, very, very, uh, how to say, powerful, it can give results in the bad side. Some cases, a very high quality deed, good deed, also have brought results in the very same day in some stories. For example, Malika, the queen of the king Kosala, because of offering to the Buddha uh, some food, Buddha mentioned, because of this merit, she would become the queen of the kingdom of Kosala in this very day. So likewise, uh, there are some strange phenomena regarding the strong karmas. Within seven days, they give results. Still, even the first Javana Chaitanya of other normal deeds can also bring results, but most or mostly they are not evident or conspicuous even to the doer. Most of the Javana Chaitanas, first Javana Chaitanas, do not bring results in terms of Janaka Kicca. Most of the Javana Chaitanas, first Javana Chaitanas that we uh, arouse does not bring results in this very life. Right? So in Dhammapadana, Buddha mentioned that a person who harms an Arahant will encounter ill results of his evil deeds soon within the very life. So he says, he who inflicts violence on those who are unarmed and offense those who are inoffensive will soon come upon the upon one of these ten states. So he says sharp pain or disaster, bodily injury, serious illness, de uh, uh, dearrangement of mind, trouble from the garment, the garment, right? Uh, 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 or grave charges, loss of relatives, loss of wealth, or house destroyed by. Uh, revenging fire upon dissolution of body that ignorant man is born in hell. So likewise, Buddha mentioned if the karma is very powerful, strong, it can give uh, results immediately. So this is called the Dhamma Vedaniya Karma, the karmas which bring results immediately. Upapacha Vedaniya Karma. Uh, Chaitanya of the seventh Javana brings results in terms of Javana Kicca in the immediately following life. It can bring in the immediately following life. Hence, they are called Upapacha Vedaniya. Right? They can also bring the next life if they were Kamapata, if they were a Kamas that has the strength of bringing a rebirth. They may also bring the rebirth in the next, very next life. Seven Javana Chaitanya of Kamma that has not become Kamapata can only bring Pavatripaka in the immediately follow. It means if the for a for a Kamma to become a rebirth, it has to reach a certain level. It has to have a certain high quality, high power. If the Kamma is not very strong, it may not bring rebirth in the next life. For an example, uh, the ten Kamapatas, like for example, standing or harsh word may cause a bad rebirth to a Putujana. But for a Sota Panna Sakadagami, even he may commit such deeds, slandering and harsh word, that has no ability of taking to the woeful state, him to the woeful state. So likewise, a Kamma has to reach the level of uh, Kamma Pata in order to bring a result, bring a, bring a Patisandhi. So the Kamma which has not gone into that level can only bring results during a course of life. It cannot produce a new life. Right? It cannot produce a new life. Uh, uh, and also, uh, we also mentioned that uh, Akusala Garuka Kammas, I think it's 113, right? Fundamental. It was stated above that Akusala Garuka Kammas will surely bring the following rebirth in the health. So yesterday we discussed about few Kammas that are heavy Kammas, inevitable Kammas. If someone has done such like deeds like killing mother, killing father, killing an Arahant, uh, breaking the Sangha's unity, shedding the Buddha's blood. In these cases, if someone has done these evil deeds, it is impossible that he could prevent the next rebirth in a woeful realm. So it means these kammas will surely bring a result in next life. And according to the chart, so when someone, for example, if you take killing a mother, if this was the action of killing mother, so there are seven javana. This will bring results in this very life. This can bring result only in the next life. They can bring, these five can bring results in the life after the third, starting from the third. So when we say Garuka Kammas are sure to bring the next rebirth, we are talking only about the seventh Javana Chetana. Seventh Javana Chetana, which, is, which can only, uh, which, which is of uh, sphere of resulting in the immediately following life. But it doesn't mean that these five Chetanas are not going to give results. They will give results. They can give results. 
But when we say about uh, inevitable Garuka Kamma that cannot be prevented, it means we are focusing mainly on the Chetana of this seventh Chitta. Because we said we have to merge the two fundamentals. But the fundamental means yesterday's study was there are certain actions that cannot be prevented from giving a result in a more full state. These are some, there are six types of e evil deeds. So if they are fixed, so then also we know when we look into a one chart of a chitta bhitti, the first chitta can give only in this life, not after the death. Saman jamana can give only in the next life, not before, not after. Then the middle five can give only after the second life. So when we talk about the Garuka Kammas, when we say it's inevitable quality, inevitable quality is attribute, is vested in this seventh uh, Chetana of this seventh Java. It is found in this. So that is what this fundamental says. It was stated above that Akusala Garuka Kammas it surely bring the following rebirth in hell. This attribute of unfailingly bringing an awful rebirth immediately after death is found in the Chetana of the seventh Javana of the Viti that which the deed was, uh, with which the deed was committed. So this is also another fundamental that we consider merging two basic rules. Then we come to the Aparapariya Vedana. Aparapariya Vedana uh, Kama means the Kamas within the first uh, middle five. So they are much stronger. Chetanas of rest of the Javana Chittas, to wit, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th Javanas can bring results starting from the 3rd life. Hence, they are called Apara Pariya Vedaniya Kama. If they belong to a Kama that has reached the state of Kama Pada, they can bring both Patisandhi Vipaka and Pavati Vipaka uh, in future lives starting from the 3rd life. Otherwise, it means if their Kama has not reached the level of Kama Pada, I mean, if they cannot bring a, a Patisandhi, they can bring only Pavatvi Paka during the course of Sansara, starting from the third life. When I say third life, uh, if you go to the fundament, uh, footnote 194, right? I think 194, right? 19, sometimes can change. Yeah, 193, sorry. 193, here the life in which the Kamma is done is considered as a present life, and the life which immediately follows is considered as second life. Right? First, the present life and the second life. That is how I use. When I say present life, it means the life in which the Kama was done. Second life is immediately following. Third life is the life after. Right? It doesn't mean the first life of the second life of the Sansara. Right? It is the second life from starting from this life. Right? So 500 goddesses of the deity Subrahma was born in the hell because of a Kama they had committed in the Sansara. When Aparapari Vedana, another point within ball letters, merging another fundamental, when an Aparapari Vedaniya Kama brings a rebirth, it is considered as a Katatta Kama. Right? You remember, Katatta Kama was said, we said, uh, not the heavy Kamas, not the uh, uh, Asanda Kamas, not the Achina Kamas, unspecified Kamas. Unspecified Kamas were twofold. Unspecified Kamas which were done in this very life, or kammas that were done in the past lives. So, Aparapariya Vedaniya means it has to be a kamma that was done two lives ago. So, uh, it means all the Aparapariya Vedaniya kammas, if they give a river, they fall into the group of Katatta kamma. That is another fundamental. Then, uh, so according to the above information, kamma vachara chetanas, kamma chetanas, in a kamma vachara meeting, can be analyzed as follows. You can see it's a very basic fundamental. The Chetana of the first Javana should be called Dittadama Vedaniya. Chetana of the seventh Javana should be called Apara uh, Upapacha Vedaniya. Chetana of the middle five should be called Aparapariya Vedaniya. Right? So then, commentary on Nidana Sutta of Angutra Nikaya renders a simile which illustrates the difference between Aparapariya Vedaniya and the remaining two. So, uh, sorry, Dittadam Aparapari Vedaniya is the middle five. Right? Try to it. Dittadamma, then Papanja. Just put the name Vedaniya, right? So, first seven and middle five. So, if 
the Papancha Vedaniya. Yeah, Dhitudama Vedaniya Kamma. We only we can give results in this very life. Papancha Vedaniya on the next life. They can give results till we attain Paranipa. The simile was, someone shoots a, a deer with an arrow, with an arrow. If it hits, if it success in the shot, the deer will die, the man will collect the meat and go home. If, so likewise, if the Dhitudama Vedaniya Kamma, or the Upupadja Vedaniya Kamma gets the opportunity in this very life or in the next life, they would give the results. But what happens if the man misses the shot? The deer will run away and it will not even look at that direction again. So if these kammas, this is the point, if these kammas doesn't get an opportunity within this life and Upupadja Vedaniya Kamma in the next life, they become unproductive kammas. They don't have the opportunity to give results. That is the sphere. So likewise, the deer will not come back. So these five kammas will follow. It is like a man hunting a deer, releasing the dogs. So even the dogs misses the deer, they will keep on following. And when the opportunity is given, they, they will catch the deer and the man could take the meat. So likewise, Aparaparivedaniya kammas will follow the doer till he attains the final Paranibbana. Even after becoming Arahant, some kammas will follow and give results, like as it happened to Mahamukalana, right? So the simile says like that, I'll read the simile. A hunter shoots an arrow at a deer. If he hits the target, he will kill it and takes, the, takes its meat, its meat, right? Takes its meat. In case he misses the shot, the deer will run away and will not even look at the direction of the hunter again. Likewise, if a Dhitadama Vedaniya Kamma gets an opportunity to use its results in the present life, it will give its vipaka. However, if it does not get the opportunity within that very life, it will never yield this Janaka vipaka. In the same manner, if an Upapacha Vedaniya Kamma, Kamma finds the opportunity to yield its results during the second life, it will give its vipaka. However, if it does not receive an opportunity during the second life, it will never bring its Janaka vipaka. Another hunter releases his dogs to catch a deer. In that case, dogs will chase the deer as far as it runs and catches it when it is possible. So likewise, an Apara Parivedaniya Kamma will follow the doer till the attainment of Parnibbana uh, and will give its Janaka Vipaka when the opportunity is found. There is no being who is wandering in the samsara but is free from the Apara Parivedaniya Kamma. Even the Buddha himself had to encounter uh, after his enlightenment, it says he encountered 11 Kama Vipaka. Before his enlightenment, one during his Bodhisattva era while practicing to enlightenment, and then 11. Right? Uh, in some traditions, it is 12. Anyway, so this is another point. Then all the Javana Chetanas in Panchadwarika, uh, sorry, then uh, also we have to understand the Javana Chetanas in Panchadwarika Vitis and also in the dream dream also becomes kamma but they can only become give results in pavarti vipaka not uh, how to say patisandhi vipaka in dreams also we we get a wholesome mind or unwholesome mind right sometimes we do good things in dream we do bad things in dream so they will also have that karmic energy so whatever javana chitta arises in a being whose latent defilements are not removed create a kamma. It doesn't mean that these kammas are going to give a rebirth in a good or bad state. Right? When we say kamma, we, are, we always think that it is, how to say, it's going to give a rebirth. No. But there are some effects. Right? So as long as we are not arahans, we are not free from these kamma. All the jhavana. Because, because of all latent defilements, latent defilements, these chittas would leave a certain force. That is the basic fundamental. Now we come to the Ahosikamma, sphere of Ahosikamma. So Ahosikamma should be understood in this way. Now if you look at the board, this Kamma should give results in the present life, this can only give in the next life, this can give till Parnibbana. If the first Javana Chetanas of our this life doesn't get the opportunity to yield their results, they would become Ahosi, unproductive in terms of, uh, in terms of Javana Kitta, Jav Javana Kitta. If the seventh Chetana becomes, doesn't get the opportunity, they will become, in the next life, they will become unproductive, Ahosikamma. If these five Chetanas doesn't get the opportunity 
Till the attainment of Parmibana, after Parmibana, we call they become unproductive. Like for an example, uh, Venerable Angulimala killed 900 plus humans, maybe more than 1000, because some of the fingers would have rotten and fallen, right? So <laughs> then uh, he, 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 uh, he killed uh, many humans. But uh, uh, he had some effects about, uh, about these Kammas. He became an Arahant. Before he became an Arahant, when he was going for Pindapata, he had the effects. Someone throws a stone somewhere with a coming pub, for unfortunately it falls in his head. So sometimes when he come to the uh, monastery, he is coming with a broken head or broken uh, blood is shedding uh, from some part of the body. Then this was informed to the Buddha. Buddha mentions to what the, uh, the deeds he has done, this is much better. These kinds of vipaka the Buddha mentioned. The Buddha mentioned to the deeds that to the portion, to the weight of the deeds that he has done, what he is encountering is nothing. So in the end he became an arahant and he did not have to encounter the great suffering that other that he would have otherwise uh, experienced. So likewise, uh, if someone becomes arahant, all the past kamas after Parnibbana become ahusikam. And also if you remember, we discussed about the difference of Kamma Samangita and Kamma Sati in one lecture. Kamma Samangita is the ability to give a Patisandhi. Kamma Sati is the ability to give a result. Kamma Samangita will not uh, will be inactive from the moment you attain Arahanship because further you are not going to have a rebirth. Kamma Sati will be inactive when you attain Parnibbana. So these are two things. Uh, Kamma Samangita is a part of Kamma Sati. Kamma Sati is the energy which is left. So in this energy, if a Kamma has the ability to give a result, rebirth, that energy is called Kamma Samangita. So that becomes inactive, unproductive of, in terms of giving a rebirth as soon as you attain Arahanship. But the Kamma Sati of giving a result even during the life uh, Pavati, cause of a life, becomes inactive the moment he attains the Parnibbana. Because even Arahans do get results. Right? If uh, do get results uh, after Arahanship. So then this is the point of, uh, that is what I have mentioned in the Ahosi Kamma, you can read by yourself. Then if you go to the uh, next page, 62, right, 62, uh, fundamental 120, before, before uh, the paragraph, starting before that. The sphere of resulting of respective Kammas in terms of Upatthambaka, uh, Upapilaka and Upaghataka. I mentioned there are four functions. So this was the Janaka function I was mentioning. Upatambaka, Upapila, Upagar. Upatambaka means supporting, supporting a life, supporting a life by providing good opportunities. So that's why some people they will just uh, don't need to work much harder. We say his luck is good. So this is mostly according to the tradition, it's their kammas are active. Uh, we normally say uh, uh, you circle the top, even in the uh, sand, it will turn. Uh, if your karma is good, normally we say in, our, in, 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 in Sri Lanka. So everything you do becomes successful sometime for some. So a supportive karma is good. Obstructive karma, everything is going bad. Somehow, much, how much you try hard, sometimes things are going wrong. But it doesn't mean every success and failure of the life is because of karma. Karma can be. So this uh, the obstructive karma. Upagataka means destructive karma. It kills the life. Buddha mentioned if someone has killed beings in sansara, they would have a short life in, in sansara, short living, no uh, short lifespan. So this is Upagartaka. So uh, in terms of uh, uh, res uh, resulting these, in these three functions, this is how it should be understood. There is no such sphere for kamas in performing rest of the functions. That is to say, Upatambaka Kitcha, Upapila Kitcha and Upagartaka Kitcha. All seven Javana Chetanas in a certain viti can perform these three functions in the present life, second life and starting from the third life. So these four functions are different. So productive function is what we detail. So productive function is product producing a new life or certain mind chitta chetasikas and rupa in our body. Right? That is the uh, uh, productive function we talked in detail. Other three functions, there is no specific law. I have given you the reference. If a kamma does not get the opportunity to perform any of the foregone three functions, still, uh, till the person attains the final deliverance, they are called ahosi kamma. So, if a, there are two types of ahosi kamma. 
Ahosi kamma in terms of Janaka Kitcha, Ahosi kamma in terms of uh, the remaining three Kitchas. So in terms of Janaka Kitcha, Ahosi kamma, the first Chitta become, first Chetana become Ahosi if it doesn't get the opportunity in this life, second Chetana become Ahosi if it doesn't get the opportunity in the next life, the remaining five Chetana becomes Ahosi if it doesn't get the opportunity till Parnibbana. If you are talking about the rebirth till Arahanship. Then, in terms of the remaining three functions, they become Ahosi only when you attain Parnibbana, not even Arahanshi, only when you get the you don't get the opportunity to produce results till Parnibbana. Then, with the above information, we can observe two types of Ahosi Kammas. Kammas which did not get the opportunity to produce Janaka Vipaka, it can also be termed as true fall, as I mentioned. Kamma which did not get the opportunity to yield the Patisandhi Vipaka. Kammas which did not get the opportunity to yield Pavarti Vipaka in a life which is produced by a different Kamma. During the course, it can some Kammas produce uh, Chitta Chetsikas in our life. Kammas which did not get the opportunity to produce Vipaka in terms of Upatamaka supportive, Papilaka obstructive, Upagataka destructive. Then, an uh, obvious question that can arise with this explanation. If the first Javana Chetana is weak, Weakest. How could it bring results in the present life and the strong Javana Chetanas get delayed in producing their lives? The answer for this question is rendered in the simile of trees. It is not verifying the uh, answer, it is saying that in the world, phenomena is not always that the stronger will give results quicker. So they are just giving a simile to understand that it's not just because it's strong it would give results quickly. The simile is, think about the trees. A tree is considered strong when it has a very strong trunk, strong root. And trees are considered weak when they are like grass and doesn't have a core essence. So how do we think? These small trees, weaker trees, when they are planted, they grow quickly. They get ripened quickly and they produce their flowers and fruits quickly and pass away. But if the stronger trees, they may take few years to grow and to yield their results. So likewise, this is the same phenomena, similar phenomena happening within the Kama. When the Chitta is weaker, it would get ripened quickly and give results. If the Chitta Chetana is stronger, it would take time to give results uh, uh, and, and produce the Vipaka. So in the world, weak or small trees normally grow quickly and produce their flowers and fruits within a short period. They, are cannot, they cannot endure even one drought. Endure one drought. The Kamasati of first Javana Chetana brings its results quickly and is unable to sustain beyond one death. When a death happens, it cannot sustain. The energy cannot sustain anymore. Here death is similar to a drought. Some trees which are big, which are a big, bit, uh, bit stronger, uh, grow slowly and produce their flowers and fruits in the second season. They can endure one drought but not two. In the same manner, the coming force of the seven Javana Chetanas can sustain beyond one death and get ripened during the second life. They are unable to remain beyond the second life. They, there are strong large trees that grow slowly and produce their flowers and fruits after few seasons. They can endure more droughts in the same manner. Rest of the Javana Chetanas sustain beyond two deaths and even more get riper slowly and bring results later, starting from the third life. So, this is how the tradition would explain. Then, uh, also, I would like to say Mahagata Kamas, the Chetana of Janas, right? Chetana of Janas would always can only bring results in the immediately next life. If you attain a jhana, very high concentration, not normal concentration, the jhana concentration, it can bring results in the immediate next life. It cannot give results in the very life, it cannot give results in the uh, far away life. Because they are like, they simply is, they are like the uh, ripened uh, cooked rice, so they cannot sustain beyond the uh, next uh, next life so they uh, because of their strong uh, how to say nature strong nature means they are being products of a uh, huge effort so they bring results immediately after death but the vipassana the magakama brings immediately after its existence so these are very special cases these are outcomes the culmination of a certain practice so they are considered uh, how to say, they would give results immediately after it and immediately after the existence. But the Mangakama is very special 
because of its special attribute it, may, it will give results immediately after death and also it can produce results till we attain the parinibbana as a noble being right so then uh, yeah lokutra chetana also gives immediate yeah. then uh, with regard to the lokutra chetana marga chetana, marga chetana it uh, for it results to ripen if you want to attain the palachitta palachitta is the vipaka of magga so immediately it will happen after the attainment but if you want to arouse the palachitta again it will not happen because of the force of the karma only you have to practice so the vipaka of magga is different than the other vipaka other vipakas you don't have a control much it will give results by the power of the karma but the magga palachitta which is the result of a magga it needs the power of the magga uh, kam, magga uh, karma force of the magga chetana at the same time you have to practice then after the practice in the end of the practice you would attain the parasamapatti right so these are the points that i would like to discuss so in this lecture we talk about the ripening time of a karma so karma has four functions janaka upattambaka upilaka upagataka in terms of janaka functioning there is a specific law that the first chetana gives can give only result in this life seven chetana can give results in the next life only following life the remaining five can give results till one attains the parinibbana then uh, with regard to the other four functions three functions there is no such a specific law they can follow till the attainment of parinibbana but if they did doesn't get the opportunity they will fall into a house of karma and these uh, the chetanas of a bhikkhu who doesn't get, which doesn't get the opportunity in their specific time become a hosi kamma and also uh, this law is for the kamma vachana chetanas for the mahagata chetana like jhana kammas they will surely bring results in the next life they are the, they are the garuka kammas uh, lokotra chetana would bring results immediately after the existence anantarya kamma and also their results can be experienced in afterwards of but uh, with some if uh, with some with the practice right so these are the points that i would like to discuss so another aspect of kamma yeah uh, so if you have any questions uh, because i will conclude the lecture okay, so then we we'll uh, start with, the, with a short break